Riley Davis of Heat Check CBB, joined again by Brian Ralph, my Heat Check cohort, breaking down some games. Uh, got a loaded slate this Saturday. One that might be flying a little under the radar is Kentucky playing Penn. Now, we know that Penn, um, they beat Villanova, sort of flummoxed them with their zone. Uh, but do we think they can maybe pull off the second big upset again? They're playing in Philadelphia. Like, the 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 advantage is there for Penn. But how do you think they match up with this Kentucky team, Brian? Yeah, P- Penn's technically the home team playing in Philly, but they're playing at Wells Fargo. And uh, I have a feeling there's going to be a very large contingent of Big Blue Nation there. <laughs> I don't think it'll <laughs> feel like a Penn home game. Um, I I have a hard time believing Penn beats Kentucky or hangs in there, really. Um, I, I think the win over Villanova told us a lot about Villanova, which we've seen since they came back from Atlantis, right. uh, as opposed to something about Penn. Penn's offense is is fine, and they can put up points against Kentucky if Kentucky is not playing at its top level or, or, or bringing the intensity on the defensive end of the court. But this is a team that's three and three since that Villanova win. All three losses have come in overtime, but they haven't been against teams you would consider to be good teams. <laughs> uh, teams have figured out zone, the, the zone defense they play. They rank outside the top 300 nationally and adjust the defensive efficiency. Um, given the way Kentucky can light teams up, and the fact they may be a little uh, ready to make a statement coming off the loss to UNC Wilmington. I'm expecting a, a top tier performance from Kentucky trying to bounce back. And I think that puts Penn in a, in a tough spot here. Yeah. Honestly, when I ask can Penn do it again and get a second, let's say blue blood slash blue blood light type upset. It was definitely tongue in cheek. I don't think there's any way Penn wins this game. Um, like you said, the teams that they've lost to, I mean, Maryland Eastern Shore, who <laughs> yeah. covered the MEAC for the Almanac. I got a lot of love for the MEAC. I think Jason Crafton has done a f- tremendous job elevating that program from being like the worst in the country. Uh, but they lost a lot. That's a, it's basically a brand new lo- roster. And even I know it was an overtime, but still, you can't lose that game if you want to be taken seriously, even in the Ivy League. Um, yeah. The, the it, recipe, the recipe for Penn is to slow Kentucky down because Penn plays at one of the slower paces in the country. You want to slow Kentucky down and make threes, which Penn can do. They have a, a wide mm-hmm. range of shooters on their team. Um, and apply some game pressure to Kentucky. One thing, too, that will be interesting is that Kentucky has not been a good rebounding team this season. Their bigs have been hurt. Of course, they're not a great rebounding team. Like They haven't really played a big guy. Uh, Penn has been solid on the glass and did well against Villanova on the glass too. If Penn can at least keep it even with Kentucky on the boards, slow the game down and and make a good deal of threes, that's the recipe for at least keeping this close for Penn. Mm-hmm. But a lot of things have to go right for them to even be in position to make a move. And I I, I don't know if all those things are going to break their way. Yeah. I'm like, technically you maybe you see a world where Penn covers because like pretty much every Ivy League, I think they run like a Princeton type offense where they facilitate a lot through the the pinch post, through their big man and everything. And maybe that causes some issues for a young team. But I, I think we're going to get the most focused version of Kentucky, especially coming off a home loss. Um, you can't even say they're going to be looking ahead to North Carolina because that's a week away. It's not right. like they're it's not like they play Penn and then play UNC on Tuesday. Um, I think they're going to be lasered in. Like you said, Big Blue Nation, they travel well. It's not going to feel like it's a, a no. true away game by any stretch. Um, and yeah, e- even against this zone, like Kentucky shooting 41 and a half percent from three, uh, that's their the fifth best shooting team in the nation, which that's kind of been the knock on Calipari. What? Like the last half decade is that yeah. he couldn't like really since Tyler hero was there, he hasn't been able to get consistent three point shooting. Um, not the case at all with this team. Dylan no, they... Dylan has better across the board than we expected. Antonio mm-hmm. Reeves has been on fire aside from that one. Like, was he one for? What was he that night against Kansas? Was it one for 16, three for 16? He, he was, it, it was a lot for, it was like four of 17 or something like three stupid. for 17, three for Kansas. 17. Yeah. He's been lights out aside from that game. He has, he has. And Kentucky's got a number of guys who can shoot. Um, one thing too, with Kentucky in this game, like you would expect them to be like, well, if we can turn Kentucky over, then we can get a chance to get some easy baskets in transition. Kentucky's second nationally in turnover rate. Like they don't give the ball away which is incredible considering how young this backcourt mm-hmm. is too. And there there are some things with shot selections. They ran into some issues trying to, to bring Aaron Bradshaw back into the fold and kind of threw the rhythm off. 
the UNC Wilmington played well too in that game that Kentucky lost. But I, I don't think that performance for Kentucky was an indication of things to come. It felt like more of a, a blip on the radar than any, an indication of how this team is playing. You look mm-hmm. at everything that they've put forth on the court, where they project to grow. Like This team is viewed as a Final Four contender, a national title contender for a reason. I don't expect them to lose back-to-back games to UNC Wilmington and Penn. I'm with you. Any bold predictions about like who from Kentucky might have a big game? Like, could we get a little, uh, little Aaron Bradshaw breakout? You know, he's second game healthy. Um, yeah, Kentucky get him more involved. Kentucky needs him to be. I think this could finally be a game where we see Justin Edwards have a big impact because he he is the the mold that Penn's roster is not built to deal with. Mm-hmm. You know, super versatile, athletic, six eight guy with skill can play at all three levels like that's that's a matchup nightmare for anybody let alone an ivy league team uh, i think we see a big game out of him i like that pull yeah because again i think you're you're spot on that's the type of athlete that usually you even think about the ncaa tournament princeton's run last year notwithstanding when you think about those the, those ivy league teams they they struggle against nba level athletes it's uh mm-hmm. just a matter of if they can be fundamental enough or whatever i want to say like nerdy enough to make an ivy league joke but like to 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 outsmart their opponent or something but yeah i think they struggle Mm -hmm. to stop justin edwards and maybe we see his best game so far 